Positively Muskegon, it's Andy O'Reilly and I'm here today with Terry Sabo, who is running for Michigan House? Yes, uh, the 92nd District. 92nd District, we're giving every candidate that's taken a run this year a chance to come on Positively Muskegon, introduce themselves, talk about what's important, and basically give you an opportunity to get to know who's, who's running for office a little bit better. Terry is uh, taking advantage of it, and we're glad he's here. So, yeah. if people don't know what the 92nd District is, Start there. Well, it, uh, the 92nd district is pretty pretty uh, uh, large. It goes from Muskegon Heights, okay. City of Muskegon, Muskegon Township, then it works its way north, North Muskegon, Laketon Township, Fruitland Township, all the way up to Whitehall Township. Really? Yeah, okay. it's it's a long ways. So you got a big you got a pretty big map there. It, it really is. Yeah, yeah. And, but I mean, these are places that you're really pretty familiar with. I oh, mean, extremely. The years you spent in the Heights as a firefighter and police officer, you live up that way. Yeah. So uh, you're, you're right in your home district. Yeah, I live in Laketon Township. Uh, um, I've been representing the north side as the county commissioner there for the last couple of elections since uh, 2012. Yep. So I've gotten to know that area pretty well. But uh, for 25 years, I've worked for the city of Muskegon Heights between the police and fire department. So uh, it was, uh, you know, it, it's a big district, but uh, but I know the district very well. I mean, it, with all the, those people and all those places in that district, what do you see as the, the most important parts of this campaign. What are, you, what, what are you hanging your hat on? Well, really two things, economic development yeah. and, uh, and then building a better relationship between governments. Um, those are, to me, the big, big things. Um, we've had a problem, I think, in years past when it comes to uh, those relationships between the state government and local governments, um, which has really caused some problems, especially when it comes to revenue sharing. Uh, and those are issues that uh, we see firsthand when it comes to uh, having the monies available for to, to fund our police departments, fire departments. Um, I've seen that firsthand. But then, you know, from the economic development standpoint, to be working with the, with the Port of Muskegon and uh, trying to redevelop that again, um, you know, that's been a great opportunity for me. And I think it's going to be a really big opportunity for the county of Muskegon and this whole region. With, with the, this change going on, and, and you know, we, I've talked about it repeatedly, I feel a tidal wave coming. Yeah, at Muskegon. Am yeah. I am I wrong in that feeling? I don't think so. I, I say it all the time. Muskegon is changing. Yeah. Um, and I think it's it's changing for the good. Yep. Um, and we better embrace it because this is what we have coming, and uh, it's time now to jump on board and and uh, to take advantage of everything that we have coming. Talk about your family life a little bit. I know you've got an awesome wife. She's yeah. been in here on the show in the past, and uh, I mean th these are important things. Well, she runs the show, and uh, you know <laughs> he's good enough to admit it. Yeah, you know it's uh, she is uh, she's a terrific person. Sure, uh, I would not be sitting here today if it wasn't for her. Isn't that something? Uh, oh yeah, that's how it works, yeah. isn't it? For a couple of different reasons, but I'm, uh, I'm the same way with my wife. I yeah. mean, everything I've got, everything I've done, has all come since she's come along. Yeah, and you know we've only been married for a few years, yeah. but and we've been together for quite a few years. But, uh, um, you know, we, we took our family, blended our family, and um, I'm very proud of, uh, of, of the kids that we yeah. have together, yeah. um, the kids that she brought in, the kids that I brought in, and of course now we have grandkids. And, Best thing in the world, isn't oh, it? Oh, <laughs> it's, it's, I'm, I'm very fortunate. Yeah. But, uh, but uh, with our four kids uh, growing up really now, you know, across the country, you know, with their own families, and it's, uh, it's quite an experience. Keep yourself you busy, that. right? Oh, yeah, that's for sure. You mentioned the imbalance. Uh, of government and money and all that kind of stuff. Do you mm -hmm. think that the east side of the state gets more than we do? Yeah, I, well, I definitely. I think yeah. that they they look. I think when it's natural, you look back towards uh, you know things are looking always towards the Detroit area, towards the other side of the state. Um, unfortunately, they have not been looking at uh, Flint over the last few yeah. years, and uh, that's a that's a horrible situation that's going on there. You, um, it, to yeah. me, it's like a third world country problem. Oh, yeah. How can that happen in, in the United States? In Michigan, surrounded right. by fresh water. Unbelievable. Um, yeah, it's it's bad and uh, it's not only a problem now, but it's a problem that's going to be there for a long time. Yeah. And uh, we need, we all need to be working together to, to, uh, to help out Flint yeah. and the residents there. Take those folks into consideration. Economic development. Ideally, give me your ideal. What would you like to see Muskegon do in the next 10 years? Well, uh, develop that lakeshore, develop uh, the Port of Muskegon, um, use that to our advantage. I, I think the, the blue economy is a, is a big deal. Um, it's right here in our own backyard. We need to take advantage of that. Um, let's uh, increase our shipping that we have going on at the port. 
I love what we go, have going on with the, uh, um, the cruise ships coming in. Very cool. Um, every little bit counts. Yeah. And you know, I hear a lot of times too, some negative things about the cruise ships, like, oh, what are these people gonna do when they get here? Well, I'll tell you what, what they're gonna do is they're gonna go to the museums that we have in town. Yep. Um, you know, I was there last year when the cruise ship came in, um, and, and especially when they were getting ready to leave. Were you handing out flyers? Well, I wasn't, no, no. <laughs> You know, there's no votes there for me. I know. <laughs> but at the same time, you know, I felt as chairman of the county board of commissioners that it was crucial that I be there yeah. to, to make sure that uh, they know that Muskegon was really happy to have them. And the, I'll tell you, the feedback I was getting from the passengers coming back on board again was they love downtown Muskegon yeah. and, and the different museums that we have here and the different attractions, and they want to come back. And, well, obviously, the uh, the operators of that uh, shipping industry there, they wanted to come back too. So that's It's a big deal. And, and, and you know... My argument is this, is, you know, what are people going to do mm -hmm. when they come to Muskegon? You know what? There's your opportunity. Oh. Get out and make something for them to do. I mean, That's right. figure out a way to make a buck, a tourist shop, you know, whatever it takes. Let's get more people here to That's see right. that what they see on the news isn't exactly how life is in Muskegon That's day right. in and day out. We're not perfect, but no. uh, but I'll tell you what, we've got a lot of energetic people here in Muskegon, and, uh, and I'm excited about the future and the way this is going. So you're coming knocking at my door. This, this is how we'll wrap it up. Okay. Give me your 30-second elevator speech about why we should pick you for state rep. Well, I'm chairman of the county board of commissioners, and, uh, and I have that experience um, when it pertains to how government works. Uh, you know, I think, again, going back to the relationship between state government and local government, um, we need to have somebody who knows how that works. We need to have somebody who understands the entire district from the south to the north. Um, I think those are big deals. Um, we need to have somebody who already has contacts in Lansing, and I have those contacts, and, uh, and I'm excited to put everything to work, and I'm excited to start working for the people of the 92nd District. Look at him. He's on his way, folks. <laughs> Best of luck to you, Terry. We And like I said at the beginning, any candidate running for anything got an open op opportunity to come on board here. I think it's important that we get to know the people that are representing us and see them for, you know, just the average person looking for uh, a way to make things better. Terry Sabo, best of luck. What do you got, 90 days left? I got 91 days left, but I want to, before I leave, I want to say thank you, Andy, for what you're doing oh. for Muskegon. And, uh, <laughs> you're a big part of it, as, yeah, uh, as well, uh, many others are. So it, it, it got to the point for me where I literally said, nobody's doing this right anymore. What's it going to take to do that? Mm -hmm. You're looking at it. There we are. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's pretty simple and it's pretty rudimentary, but... We're trying to tell a little bit better story here on Positively Muskegon. Terry, thanks. Thank you.